everybody, Caleb here. Today I've got this uh, little Gretsch mandolin. Um, there's nothing really wrong with it except for the action was so low that it was uh, sitting on all the frets. So I've already started to adjust that. As you can probably tell it's missing a string and it is dusty. So we're going to basically just do a little bit of a setup on here. Uh, get it cleaned up. Uh, and uh, send it back on its way. This is just a little job. This uh, was actually dropped off to me by a a former leader in my uh, my old scout troop. This was his brother's, and he uh, just asked that I kind of clean it up and get it playable for him. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for him, and we'll get this going. So we'll set her down and go. All right, so we got this thing sitting down here, and I may as well take these old strings off of here. We broke one, or one was broken when I got a hold of this, and uh, we're just gonna replace them. I've got a set of. Um, Martin mandolin strings. These are fairly affordable strings, I think. So I'm not real, like, <clears throat> worried about what's going on here. This is, this is not by any means like a super high-end mandolin. So, I just put in strings on here to put strings on here, really. Um, I'm getting close to just cutting these things. I'm not sure if that's what I want to do yet. Yeah, there's not really any reason not to. I'm just gonna go and cut these. Okay. Pulled that bridge off of there, which is okay. Um, it did leave a nice spot where I can see where the bridge was. So, yeah, you can see that on camera. That's kind of funny. We'll set this to the side for a second. Let's pull these strings out. Okay, we'll work on the headstock now. Stringless. Let's take a look at this guy. It is uh, dusty. Step one. I'm just gonna dust it off real quick. We're probably gonna do a little bit more cleaning than this yet. I just noticed the string that was broken still has a piece on the end here. Just pulled off, okay. Okay. That's pretty good. What I want to do is, I noticed it's got a truss rod. Not all mandolins do. This one does. I'd like to check neck straightness just to make sure it's pretty flat. These mandolins, they really can be pretty close to flat. Um, <clears throat> you won't really notice... Like with the guitars, you want a little bit more, uh, a little bit more relief in there. But these mandolins can be pretty close to flat. So I've got a piece of metal here, and we're just gonna lay that on the frets. I've not got a notch straight edge for mandolins, so this is gonna be what we use. If it ain't flat, it's really close. Close as I can see. So that's good. Um, if we do a quick inspection of these frets here, I don't see any flat spots, any worn spots. They're just a little uh, dull. I'll let you take a close look there. There's not really anything flat on them, where they've got fret wear or anything. We're doing pretty good. So all we're going to do is just polish these up. And. I think that'll be sufficient, so that's just going to be my polishing pads. We don't have... no, honestly, this thing is in really good shape, like fret wear. It's not got basically any fret sprout. It feels really good. This thing's going to play really great. I, we just got to get it cleaned up. So let's polish those frets. I will also get out my uh, Be Good Wood Oil. 
because I'll be wanting to use that here shortly. And let me go grab a uh, cloth real quick. Okay. So we're just going to clean this guy up. We're going to start with our polishing pads here, make sure they're in order. We'll just start polishing these up. I'll clean the board as well, so right now there's no reason for me to tape it off or anything. And immediately, I'm getting more shine out of these. Immediately, we're starting to polish these guys up. Oh yeah, that's looking cool. Okay, let's start working our way through these. You really ain't got to spend a whole lot of time on these, which is why I like it. And I like it because it's basically just uh, the same as like sanding. This is a very clean process, all things considered. I like this over well, the liquid polishes because liquid polishes make a lot of mess. I'm not worried about getting anything on the board here because the only thing I'm doing is sanding off the tiniest, tiniest amounts. And as I go scrape the board, I'll take anything that gets on the board off. Whereas with like liquid polishes, you could get some of that in the board and it may soak in and you're really not gonna be happy. This is a big time saver for a very, very similar result. And of course these mandolins, these frets probably don't even need to be any more polished than they are right now. That first pad was probably enough. Um, when you don't do vibrato, then you really, really don't, uh, you don't feel that difference um, when you get really high polished. On like a guitar, when you do a lot of vibrato, you know, you're bending strings, you can really feel those frets. But on mandolin, especially with two strings, you really don't want to bend them because they're going to go out of tune of each other and it's not going to sound good. So your number one goal on mandolin is keep those strings in tune. And so you don't, I don't think, I don't really feel like you notice the difference as much. Last one. And, yeah, it's looking good. I'm just gonna kinda run those edges, just make sure that's smooth. And there should be some nice polished frets. Oh yeah, you can see them shine. Okay, so we're gonna clean up that fretboard now. And the other nice thing about cleaning up mandolins is this fretboard is flat. There's no radius to it. Um, some mandolins there are, but some there are not. This is a totally flat fretboard. And I like that because it makes my job very easy. I'm actually going to take that out and just hold it here. And just scrape the top off of the board. And really, I'm just removing any gunk. And I can go right over the dots and it just cleans it up. I don't really want to hit the plastics too much to change the color of them, but this really does clean up the board here. All right, that's looking good. So we'll put this back underneath here and we'll grab our uh, paintbrush. Just dust that off real quick. And that's already looking really good on that fingerboard. That's been no time at all. Uh, and we're looking really good on that fingerboard. So I'm going to go ahead and oil this next. I've got some uh, Be Good Wood Oil here. This is some good stuff. I really like it. Just got to shake it up because I noticed it was uh, separating. And this doesn't take a lot of this stuff. That's all I'm using right there. You can see that is a small amount of liquid. I'm just going to use my fingers. This stuff is uh, usually used for like butcher block oil. So it means it's uh, food safe, which means it's finger safe. It's just beeswax for the most part, I believe. 
beeswax, food grade mineral oil, and uh, says antimicrobial fragrances and other food safe wood preserving oils. But I believe that it is mostly beeswax and mineral oil. It makes those boards look so good. I'm actually going to take what's on my fingers here and go rub down the, uh, the bridge. Not just get up a little bit more. Any of these raw wood surfaces really like the oil, and they look so much better when they're well oiled. Okay, so now any excess of that, we'll just take a clean cloth. I'm going to tear it in half because we'll use the other half for something else here in a second. And we'll just do this. Now that is a well-oiled board. And it is so nice, these well-oiled boards. They are so smooth. You can feel that when you're playing. It is so nice. I'm going to do the same thing with the bridge. Wipe off any excess I may have gotten on there. But we think we're doing good. So Now, the other thing I wanted to do with my other half here. I'm just going to really lightly moisten this. And after I do that, we're just going to give the whole thing a wipe down and take off any dust. Just got my spray bottle. And we're just going to wipe the, the body of this down. Take off any dust or bits of junk. Really, the headstocks where I noticed that was was jumping out to me is wanting to wipe down. Now, I just barely moisten this. I don't want to leave any moisture on here. Moisture on finish is never good. I just want the dust to stick to it. That is already way better. Here, I'll let you see that. The uh, headstock's clean. The fretboard is, is uh, conditioned. It's looking way better. What I'm noticing is these, uh, these tuners are sun bleached on one side and not the other. I'll see if I can't show you here. So here's, here's the side that's had sun and here's the side that hasn't. So these are probably closer to the original color and these are super yellowed. We're just going to run through here and take any extra dust off. We're doing good. I believe all these tuners work fairly well, so I don't need to oil them or anything. Last thing we're going to do here before we start putting that bridge back on, I'm going to take my mechanical pencil and run just a little bit of lead in the... Uh, in the fret slots. That graphite from the uh, pencil lead will lubricate those nut slots and allow the strings to just slide right on through there. Just make sure we ain't got too much on the top here. That's looking good. That's entering the realm of Looking like a whole different mandolin. Alright, I'm going to wipe down this bridge a little bit. It's looking a little smudgy. This is the same rag I used to wipe down the rest of it. I'm just pushing a little harder and it's just abrasive enough it is actually polishing out this metal piece. It looks so much better. Just me rubbing it down with some vigor, really pushing on it. I'm not trying to bend it, but here I'll show you. Look at that polish. I might even, yeah, you get all the lights and the ceiling in there. Cool. That is cool. We are doing good. Okay, so. We can start thinking about putting this back on here now. Just making sure I didn't mix up which direction this went on here. The 
Those feet sat pretty good on that bridge, or on that uh, top. Yeah, nope, I do have it backwards. That Those feet sit really, really good to that top that way. They, uh, they're, like, they seal against the top, the shape of the top very well. And that's what you want. You don't want any gaps underneath the feet. Because then you're not making good contact and it's not going to transfer your sound as well. Okay, so... I'm going to put this where it was. I don't know that that's actually where it's going to end up. Because we will intonate this. But I think we can trust that that's roughly where it's going to end up. And I'll make fine adjustments as we go. So, let's clear off the space here. Let's talk about putting some strings back on here. So I've got these mandolin strings. I think these are a little bit thinner mandolin strings. I've had these strings for a while. Let's hope they are still good. I figured how long I've had these. See if there's a year on it. so but I've had these for a while okay are these sitting two they are in two okay 34 24 14 10 Let's start with the big one I still look good I'm fairly certain these came with my mandolin when I bought it, my first one, which has been a while. So there's just a little, uh, here, we'll slide that in in a second. There's just a little loop end down here, a little claw to get this loop on. I can't get. <laughs> All right, I gotta keep the tension pulled on that to keep that on the hook. I want to slide that bridge in there to know that I have enough string to get over it. I'm not pulling it too, too tight. And then I'm going to pull that string just tight enough to hold that bridge in place so I don't have to worry about it for the rest of them. That should be good. It'll hold that bridge down. And we can do the rest. There's a little bit of felt in the uh, underside of this tailpiece, and the purpose of that is to mute these strings behind the bridge on this side, because mandolins can be very resonant, and you can end up with these strings ringing all over the place. When So this is where it's tuned, and when these start ringing, they don't sound great. having a heck of a time getting this strung up. I'll go ahead and finish this up. It's just repeating this process and I'll bring you back as soon as I get it strung up and tuned and we'll check the string height and the intonation. All right, well this took a little bit longer than I was expecting because as soon as I put that first high E string on, the uh, loop broke open. So I had to go get some more strings. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we finally got this thing strung up and it's pretty much in tune. I think we're going to check the intonation real quick because the action looks really good. Um, here is fine. 
Um, I need to test it back here, but I'm going to need a thicker pick than that. Um, so we're going to just kind of eyeball intonation real quick. That's going to take getting this thing perfectly in tune, and I can maybe turn this around so you can see it. Oh, someplace you can see it. I can do it in the viewfinder. Super flat, okay. Super flat on that side too, so that needs to come forward. Um, okay, now that we know that, that's good to know. I'm going to go grab a thicker pick real quick, and we'll make sure that uh, action isn't a part of this. It looks good. I was just playing with it a little bit, and it feels pretty good. But um, i like to like to really get an idea of where this is at. All right. Some people are not going to like this because it's not an exact measurement, but this is really going to be just perfect for this. You get a good-sized mandolin pick, kind that you would use on this mandolin, and you just slide it in here. Up here towards the top, it shouldn't really hold it. And here towards the middle, it should be fairly snug. Not exceptionally tight, but snug. So, this is actually just about perfect. It might be a hair high, but it doesn't feel it, so I'm not going to worry about it. And since this, the problem with this was that it was too low, this is perfect. Um, lowering the action is super easy on mandolins. You just lower them knobs. So I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm happy with it. All right, we're gonna move this saddle forward. This is easiest to do if I turn it towards me. And I use my whole, both hands here. Just slide it forward. Make sure it's still standing straight up. Looks perfect. So I want to make sure that saddle is still sitting perfectly straight up. Just like that. And we'll retune this thing. The joys of doing intonation. I hope you like tuning. And we'll set her right there. still flat. E string still flat as well. Alright, so we're gonna move that forward a little bit more. We are doing better. The G was actually a G, it was just an out of tune G instead of an F sharp. Alright, we are a full bridge thickness ahead of where we were, totally in front of where the feet were planted. We're now totally in line with the uh, the Fs, which is the point on the F, which is pretty normal. That's kind of the standard place they tell you to put it. But you can see, I think you can see it here, where that bridge was. 
do the tuning real quick. Okay, where you can see it. Look at that. You could use maybe just a hair more. Spot on. Spot on. So we're just push that G side up just a hair more, the bass side. Alright, so I got a little wiggle, but I think it's good. I think we're wiggling in the same direction, so we're okay there. I think we're doing good here. Um, okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is looking good. Last thing I'm going to do, go trim these string ends off nice and short. And then I think we're going to play this thing. My only other thing was I noticed as I got this strung back up, I smudged the heck out of the uh, tailpiece with my fingerprints. So we're just going to kind of wipe that down. But I think we'll play this. Cool. <laughs> playing pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with it. it. Sounds pretty good. And it plays, it feels really great actually. It's really easy to play. But yeah, no, it's playing great. Um, Got brand new strings on it, got it cleaned up a lot. That is in way cleaner condition than it was. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a mandolin setup more than anything. Not a whole lot to this one, just getting it set up, cleaned up. Just a little tip, couple tips on setting them up, I guess. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.